<laughs> He's small. Gray. No, this is Cobia. He was like light colored though. Yeah, I'm gonna wish. Try to see him. Yeah, unless he just need me to throw. He wasn't big, but. No, that was definitely a small Cobia. Got him, got him. There's another one. Yeah, no, get a bucktail. This is a video from some cobia fishing we recently did on the Chesapeake Bay. I went out with my buddy Scott and we fished the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. We spent most of our morning looking around in some other areas where we've caught cobia historically and where the reports said the fish were, but we did not see any forms of life and saw a couple fish, but they were very small. So we made our way to the bridge and ended up having a really good day. We've never, we've caught one really big fish on the bridge before, but besides that, we had never had a good day fishing the bridge. And so it was really neat to be there at the time when it was happening because there were a lot of fish on the bridge that day. Um, ah, no, I can probably, I think I can get it. He's small. You just, you just worry about the boat. So when you cobia fish, you typically fish from right. up top on the tower of the boat. So you can sight fish. It makes a world of a difference. And there were only two of us in the boat. Normally you can hand the rod down to somebody down below, but since it was just the two of us, uh, we kind of had to take our time figuring out how we were going to approach hooking the fish and passing the rod down and landing the fish while also maneuvering the boat and keeping it away from the bridge because the tide was pushing pretty hard so you want to make sure you don't end up uh, getting into a bad situation with those bridge pilings. So I climbed down and I decided I was going to grab this fish because I didn't want to uh, put him in the net we were using because it's a really big net for you know landing big cobia you can't gaff them this season so you have to have a gigantic net and it's kind of a pain in the butt to use especially by yourself this was a small enough fish that i thought i could handle him it was pretty challenging to get him but i did end up getting my hands on his tail pulled him in the boat unhooked him and got back to fishing oh come on fish i think it would have been just as bad trying to net him myself Okay. Oh, a big one right there, Scott. Yeah, it's gonna be a big one. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. You want me to drive the boat or? What? Yeah. Okay. Do you wanna? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. See if he sees it. I'm gonna keep the boat probably right where we're at. Oh, oh, little one, one little one got it. Right? So if he chases it, he might not follow him out. Damn, ruin that nice spot on this hole. He's not that small, but. No. I probably shouldn't even try to hook another one though while we're. <laughs> do you need me to go net? I don't know what to do really. Okay, what I'm probably gonna have to do is go and get the net and then take the rod. I'm just trying to... All right. Yeah, no. No, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think the I think the nicer one was really big. All right, uh, I guess we'll just sit right here and try to guard that piling while we... There's some fish on the bridge today. Amen. He'll be close. Wow, the hook is already out. You caught a tagged cobia, Scott. 
Yep. Yeah. And it's an old tag. Watch out because the hook is out. So I think the hook is outside of his mouth and it might be through his face still. So if he shakes, he might rip the hook into your, you know what I mean? I can't tell if he's unhooked completely. Oh yeah, he's completely unhooked. I get his tail. 38, yeah, no, that's all good. Just rip both the tags out. And then, Can you grab that one? yep. Okay, got that one. Okay, I'm gonna try to get him back in the water if I can hold on to him. I wanna revive him, but I don't think I'll be able to hang on to him, but I'm gonna try. So cobia are very tough to handle in the boat and I had an experience, a bad experience one time. So normally when a fish is thrashing around, when you put them back in the water, they're ready to go. But cobia, it's strange. One time I had an experience where we had, I think two fish in one day die trying to release them and they were beating us up in the boat. And then we put them back in the water and you try to hang on to them and they thrash free and then they just sink. And I don't know if those fish eventually wake back up or what, but they have so much power to shake but then somehow you put them back in the water and it's like they're dead. So I did my best to hang on to this fish and luckily he behaved and I was able to revive him and he swam off really strongly. Solid release. So we're motoring up to a bridge piling to cast this live bait. There's a couple small fish hanging out with a big fish, and the problem is the little ones will get to the bait first. With a bucktail, you have a little more control over that, but the fish were very skittish. There was a lot of fishing pressure, a lot of boats around, so live bait was really the only option, and it made it kind of tough. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Wow, yeah, that one is nice. No! All right, oh, they're still with him. It's just the small ones though. Let's just drive away. Wow. You wanna just drive away though? Cause I think they'll come back up. So you can see I hooked one of the smaller fish and another small one follows it out. I'm really just putting the screws to this fish, trying to get him up so we can get him in a net, get him unhooked and try to get back in there after that big fish. All right, I'm gonna attempt to net him myself. Is that a bad idea? Okay. you'll notice with this fish I don't revive him after I get that hook out I just send him right on his way and that's just something you got to kind of be able to judge with the one that I revived we had measured the fish and pulled tags out of him and had it out of the water for a while with this one I knew he'd be okay because I just had him out of the water for a short bit they do not release clean yeah you'll hear me make that comment about them not releasing well because as soon as you let go of them, so if you try to kind of torpedo them down into the water, as soon as you let go of them, they just kick into a half moon shape and hit the water sideways almost every time, and it looks horrible. That's just how they are, though. Things get pretty serious right here. I dropped a bucktail down deeper where we'd seen some fish. This really shows you, though, how finicky these fish were being. Um, live bit was definitely the way to go. Well, Scott, with the bucktail, if a little one eats it, I can let him spit it out. That big one wanted to bite, too. All right, I'm probably going to go live bait and just... Not much else we can do. You saw how he chased it up, but then he wouldn't take it. Scott does in fact have two functioning eyeballs, so I don't know why I felt the need to ask him that. I bet he probably saw. We're just gonna hope that he gets it. I'm just gonna throw, okay? Yep.
Oh wow, small one, small one though. Yep, yep. I'm probably just gonna let it go back down and see if the big one, will, ah, little one took it. <clears throat> oh jeez, oh my goodness, yeah, just go. Nope. Yep. I'm going to use the little net. That didn't work. Bye, buddy. All right, I'm going to get another bait. Ready? So we can't actually see the fish on this piling right now, but this is the one that they've been on. And I let this croaker swim down. Usually a croaker or a spot when it hits the water, it'll swim down. So I let him swim down a little bit and then stop the line and hold him where I think these fish are at. And you can see he gets really freaked out. The rod's moving around. I'd be pretty freaked out if there was a bunch of big cobias trying to eat me. This was the biggest croaker in the live well, so I gave the fish a second to eat, and when I did that, it ended up getting me around the piling. Got kind of messy. Oh, one got it. It's a, I think it's a good one, Scott. Ah, he's through it. He's through it. I don't know what to do. Oh, no, that's him. He's small. Yeah, just drive away. It came out. We just need to hold this spot, though. You hear me mention holding our spot. At this point, a lot of boats had seen us catch a bunch of fish in a pretty small area. And so we were trying to just stay right where we needed to fish because if you get away from it, landing a fish, somebody's gonna slide in behind you and start catching them. I apologize for all my involuntary vocalizations. These fish were beating me up pretty bad at this point. I'd caught a bunch of fish back to back to back. We were trying to just catch them quickly to try to get that big fish because we didn't know how long we had before these fish would move on or shut down. So I was working pretty hard. All right, I'm gonna let him go. What's up? Here. Is this the one or this? Okay. You ready? See how what I do? I let him swim down and then I just, oh wow. All right, uh, I'm just gonna try to hold him away. Okay, he's, Scott, he's on the other side now. Yeah, go follow him probably, follow him. Yeah, definitely follow, hurry. All right, perfect. I got a lot of drag on him, but I think I have to. Yep. Okay. I think we, if we can drive out, if we can drive out and away, He's just chilling, but I don't want him to act up and swim around the piling. Yeah, I'm hanging on. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, we're good. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yep. 
I'm gonna back the drag off. She came out and smashed it. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we've been here how many times have we fished the bridge and never seen we've seen one fish on the bridge ever until right now because the first set had a keeper but that's the next set over and the people been casting on the other side this fish really kicked my butt i was pretty tired from all the fish i had been dealing with with pretty much no breaks in between normally with cobia you have some time to recover in between fish catches and these fish were all just stacked right on top of each other this guy does the very stereotypical big cobia fight he dives down and just stays there doesn't let me pick him up if i do i'll lift him a little bit and he goes right back down cobia all have the power to fight and not let you do a thing with them but they don't always use it because they're just strange fish Sometimes they'll expend all that energy once you actually get them in the boat. This guy used a lot of it in the water. Yeah. All right, he's he's that way right now. Here, I, I might just be able to go to the bow. Uh, can you move this net, please? Yeah, he's coming up. You hear me? He's coming. Get ready. I might just be able to coast him right in the net, but definitely maybe not. Whew. Strong fish. Where are you out? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. This is a really strong fish. Holy cow. He's kind of big, isn't he? I didn't know he was big. I said I didn't know he was big. I knew it was a nice fish, but we have been fortunate enough to be part of some really awesome cobia fishing over the last few years. So we've caught a lot of fish in that 40 to 45 inch range. And I knew this was a keeper size fish, but I didn't get a great look at it when it ate the bait. So. The longer the fight went on and the way the fish was behaving, I started to realize it was a pretty solid fish. No, plus this one's not good enough. No, he's not. Oh, wow. That's not small. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, let him do that out there. Yeah. Okay. Didn't get any further video of that fish once we pulled him in the boat. Ended up measuring 54 inches long. It was a pretty skinny fish, but absolutely one of the nicer ones we've caught. I think we... Definitely have less than 10 fish over 50 inches. I could be wrong on that. Scott may have. Scott goes on a few trips without me, so he may he may have put more in the boat than I realized, but definitely one of our better fish. Right now, what you're seeing, we went back to the piling and we weren't getting bit, so I tied up a Carolina rig and I was letting baits further down, and it was really challenging because pretty much you would hook a fish, but he'd go straight in the bridge, and this one did that but we somehow managed to get him out of the bridge and drift away from the bridge but i knew that my leader and my braid were both probably really chafed up so we backed the drag off and really took our time with it because we knew it was a nice fish yeah look at my braid right now see it well it might be get worse the closer you get oh look at my braid right now i just don't know what to do there he is it's a big one Yes! 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah, that one looks like it'll go. Yep, for sure. Wow. Here's your 45. Sweet. Awesome. 43. That fish was 47 inches. Just looked a little smaller because we'd caught that other big one. In the Chesapeake Bay, there is a two fish per vessel limit on Cobia. Minimum size is 40 inches, but only one of your two fish can be over 50. We actually thought about releasing that big one, but it was hooked pretty deep. So we decided to go ahead and keep it. So we had two fish in the box, had our limit, decided to go see if we could catch and release a couple more because the fishing was so good. Scott caught another one down deep and I ended up catching our last fish of the day. We saw a little one sitting beside a piling and decided to catch him and call it a day. You get it? No. Got him. It's really small, isn't it? Whoa! <laughs> Call it a day on that one. Scott? What? Call it a day on that one. Works for me. Come on in here. Like I said, that little one was our last fish for the day. Huge shout out to Scott as always for letting me jump in the boat and go chase after some cobia. He drove the boat a lot this day. I took over a couple times when he was catching some fish, but he did the bulk of the driving and I owe a big time to him for getting me around the fish and doing all that boat driving because it is not easy around that bridge. Hopefully in the future I will have some more saltwater stuff for YouTube. I do a lot of saltwater fishing but usually I'm so excited and so involved in it that I forget to film or I just don't care enough to film because I'm enjoying it so much. But it is pretty fun to post these videos with the saltwater stuff so going to try to keep that up.